Good morning and welcome to wet, dreary Winnipeg. No sunrise this morning. Well, there was, but we couldn't see it. <laughs> anyway, we got all of the photo etch now for steps uh, 25 and 26. And uh, I, I think there's a really good chance that maybe by the end of today, um, well, we might have a problem with this little antenna thing that we nipped off in the rollback. <laughs> um, yeah, I think there's a there's a good chance we might be able to flip the page. Uh, but we won't know if we don't get at it, right? So let's get at it. And let's first roll back. Okay, I've just come back to the model table this afternoon. And uh, I was going to go ahead and uh, glue these triangular shaped br braces onto the antenna, like we talked about. And uh, I, I tweaked them up just a little bit more and got them just a little bit more lined up and to what I think is really, really good. And then I thought, uh, and I've got them in self-locking tweezer here, and you know, I'm all ready to go. And then I, I realized that, do I really need to, to glue these on? Why not just leave it the way it is? Uh, because there there is other photo etch pieces that are, uh, you know, where the, where the photo etch is bent into shape, and it's just sort of precariously staying all there all by itself. Well, this is sort of staying there all by itself. Uh, I, I don't think I need to glue glue this up. All I'm going to do is mess it up. Now, uh, it is, there is supposed to be a, a couple of things, according to, the, uh, according to the manual, that go down into these little, into these little holes. But you know, I, I have looked very closely, and there is nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, it almost makes me think that uh, I don't have the right pieces, but I mean, there, there, there is no other pieces, so it, it, it has to be this. Uh, anyway, I think what we're going to try to do now is we'll just just take this piece and and lay it on there and uh, try and get it at the right angle and just sort of set it down in a little uh, you might call it a little flood <laughs> of uh, of uh, extra of uh, not extra thin of uh, CA medium. I'll just I'll just put it right across. And then just set it in there, and then let, just let it set like that. And if you know if easy line catches on it when I'm doing the rigging or something like that, well, that's the way it goes. And I'll I'll just try and be careful. But I think we're about as done with this as we can get. We've wasted three days on this. Okay, let's just do a dry run here. Now we want it to sit so that it's going to be horizontal like that. And when I let go of it, it's not going to stay like that. So we're going to have to put something along underneath this ledge here. I'm just sort of eyeballing it to see what thickness would be maybe a toothpick. Yeah, I'm just going to push stop here for a minute. Okay, now is this maybe going to be too thick? Try and get it so that it's sort of balanced. Alright, um... Actually, that, that's not bad. So let me hunker down here and see. It's kind of it's kind of aimed up. If I could find something that was about a oh a quarter of a millimeter less in diameter than this. But mind you Okay, I, I think I'm gonna use that toothpick. 
Or maybe I should cut it and just make it a little shorter. It doesn't have to be that long. Yet on the other hand, let's see what it was. Maybe if I were to just sort of sand one side of that toothpick. Let's, let's just take this out of here. Very carefully here. Maybe I'll grab it on the end. That's better. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to sand the toothpick down just a little bit. Okay, so if I can turn this here, you can see I've sort of flat-sided the toothpick just a little bit. I think it's probably a little bit less in diameter now. I'll put it flat side down, maybe. There. Okay. Now try and get it so that it's going to be equal distance all the way around on that center piece there. I'm kind of looking straight down on it and it actually looks pretty good. Now I, I know the toothpick is a little crooked but that doesn't matter. Now does that look like it's horizontal? Yeah it's not bad. I just checked the monitor. Okay now I think we can probably go with that. I'm going to take it back off again and then I'm going to put, uh, put a uh, bead of uh, CA medium. I wonder if I should shorten this toothpick. Yeah, leave it like that. This is the uh, CA medium. I've got to move it just a little bit more to the right. There we go. I'm looking straight down on it and it's uh, it's looking pretty good. I think I can reinforce it now after after it sets. Um, I don't think I need to go poking at it or anything. I think it'll unless I was to move the toothpick just a little bit further ahead here if I can so that these these will be lower that's looking pretty good yeah it's, it's looking it's looking pretty square to me okay I will we'll let we'll let that dry I don't know if it used the put a little bit of quick setting on there or not Now I know I had said quick setting, but I meant insta set. Okay, I have just reinforced it here, and I think that this may still be a little bit liquidy. Well, or maybe not. Okay, let's move on. Okay, we are still in step 25. We are, uh, you might say, big time in 25. We've got a ways to go yet. Okay, let's not lose this. Or this. Okay. Now this, uh, thing that has a little door on the side of it, it has to go on this part right here. 
I think the safest way to handle this is leave it upside down because if I try to turn it the other way the way it shows it here in the in the manual I'll probably end up knocking it over and bending something or breaking something off okay now this let's just sort of put this the way it is in the, in the pictured here and then uh, like this okay if we glue it together like that then if we were to is there any markings on the back oh yeah you can't go wrong it has to go right on there okay then we'll just turn it over and put it on upside down it shouldn't be too hard good okay, I think I'm going to use the uh, the quick setting here I'm pretty sure I got that right where is my quick setting should I be doing this on the manual? Maybe it's not a good idea. Well, maybe if I just put on just a little bit. Okay, and being very careful to make sure that we don't accidentally bend these things on the when I'm not paying attention and we are going to let gravity be our friend here now this is a is a, actually a platform it's not a roof of something so yeah let's just turn it over here and do a dry run here and if it fits we'll put on some quick setting It looks good to me. adhered as it already okay I think we got that right now this little piece here L25 um, it looks like it goes onto a hole that you probably can't see there I can sort of see it um, but I'm wondering if maybe I had accidentally cut the pin off that was supposed to go in that hole now I, I think we'll still be able to we'll still be able to do it but in the meantime uh, let's let's do this box affair uh, b3 photo etch b3 and uh, we'll sort of make that up I don't know if it's a wireframe thing or if it's going to be solid uh, if it's solid then I don't know why they couldn't have just made it out of plastic but uh, hey People, some people just love photo etch. Okay, let's put this back where it's safe here. Um, okay, B3. Let's find that. Okay, number two is the railing. And number three is our box, and it is not wireframe. So that's a bonus. I was noticing when I was cutting those uh, triangle things for the uh, for the antenna, I, I didn't do a very good job on a couple of them. Oops! Once again, I didn't do a very good job of taping this down. Okay, got to hold it with my fingers here now. We should be able to use Andy's bender on a lot of this. All being well. There we go. Okay, as long as we have the B fret out, we may as well get this B6.
Okay, C24. And this little railing is going to be bent into a bit of a U-shape. And it has to go around a tiny little platform that is attached to one of the masts. Sort of like a, almost like kind of a crow's nest. I think I'm doing a better job of nipping these today. Gotta be careful not to bend them. Now on top of the mast that has the crow's nest goes a double antenna and it is uh, very similar to the one that we did on the hood that I had a terrible time not bending. And the difference is that this one has got a it fastens together like these these are not the same piece um yeah somehow somehow this tri this uh, triangular thing folds down and they fasten together i guess we'll figure that out well you can see it here how that how it goes i guess we'll figure it out once we uh, actually do it um yeah this piece here will slip down part way i guess and then this one would sit right on the top uh, yeah, we'll figure it out when we get to it. Anyway, let's try and find it. We need uh, D10 and D14. Okay, and here they are. Conveniently located together. May as well get these tabs here that are going to be a little bit awkward. Try not to bump the camera. We'll get these ones here. And the other one. No, we just have these ones. Now that should be it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, there we got them. Now I am pretty sure that we have all the photo etch for steps 25 and 26. Yeah, what do we got here? 8.15. Time to call it a day. And we'll see you in the morning. Well, it is morning. And I think that the best way to handle this little box is uh, bend it into the proper shape. We'll use Andy's bender. And uh, I, I don't think that I'm going to solder it. I think that I'd just put it maybe like a, a drop of CA glue on the inside. At least that's the plan right now. I, I think that should work out. But first let's try and bend it into shape so that it looks like okay we've already got this the right way up we've got the folding lines here towards us now I what I want to do is put as much of this under as I can I think we should be able to go up to that pin there and yes we can now I'm going to bend it like this. 
I'll, I'll put the macro lens on here. And uh, yeah, the idea is I'm going to bend it, pull it out, bend it, and pull it out. And on the the, uh, the final bend, I, I should get it, be able to get it most of the way, and then I'll just sort of squeeze it. Now, now we do have this little little uh, flap thing here that's going to have to be folded over afterwards. I don't think we're going to be able to use the bender for that because this thing's just going to be too too box shaped. Okay, let's uh, let's get the macro lens on here and uh, recompose a little bit. Okay, I think I've got everything adjusted here. Let's put this back. You bent the leg. Okay, try and be careful. I, I'm having a problem here, aren't I? Well, let's loosen this up a little bit. Maybe I didn't have it. cranked it down just a little tighter and uh, I think that's going to be all right this is I'll be able to feel it if it's binding and I don't think it was okay now we're going to pull it out This, uh, this may not work. See, the thing is, I, I, I want to now fold this part up. And I was hoping to be able to just fold, fold this over, but uh, I might have to end up just using tweezers. Well, let's, let's see what happens here. Let's, let's go down, crank it down. Where's my uh, hobby knife? Maybe the hobby knife here. Looks like there's something on the end of the blade, though. Can I get can I get it underneath there a little better? Yeah, I'm not going to be able to go over it because the, uh, the it, it hits the breaker bar, so so that's not going to work. I th wonder if, if I was to hold it down, just hold it down, and then just put a little bit of pressure there. Or can I get the hobby knife? Sort of pick this up. I'm sort of getting it. Okay, I've got it at about 90 degrees. Now, what if I was to hold this down like this? Doesn't matter if I mark the inside of the box, we're not gonna see it. Bring this over like this. It's not quite all the way, is it? Now let's be careful not to bend the legs. Okay. very very fragile now now we got to fold this one up maybe if I was to put my uh, 
needle in there. Okay, we kind of got it. It it might it might take some uh, very delicate tweaking. Let's see if this will stand up now. Yeah, you can you can see we're going to have to uh, squeeze it in here. Okay, that, that's pretty close, that's pretty close. Yeah, let's just uh, put some CA glue along this, along this joint here from the inside. That's gonna be uh, kind of a bit of a trick, isn't it? I'm gonna have to turn it upside down here. Obviously, it's not square, or it would be sitting square. Maybe if I was to push down like this, it would go square. No. <laughs> I'm bending the leg here, aren't I? Well, I'm going to have to straighten them out a little bit later anyway. Now, as long as it's, as long as it's basically square, at arm's length, it's going to look square. Okay, I'm just going to recompose here. Okay, I have changed my mind, and I think I will solder it. And what we're going to do is put a little dollop of solder paste where this joint is, and a little bit where that flap on the top goes, and just see if we can't get it to wick its way into the crack. I may have to sand it down afterwards, but solder uh, you know, solder sands pretty pretty good. Um, okay, Let's get the macro lens back on here now, and uh, move in nice and close and see what we can do. Okay, let's try not to bump anything here because I've got everything set up just right. Now, if you will recall, I had a problem getting the stuff that this thing poops out. Okay, now I'm just going to try and get a little bit. I'm trying to get it to stick on the. Oh, I bumped it. Okay. There, I got, got one there. That's, that's all we're going to need. The, the, the folding lines, I don't think I need to reinforce the folding lines, although I just wanted to get these two flaps, like the, this one flapped over onto this, and then the top one did uh, flapped over onto it. Um, I think that if I get those two seams done, that, that should be strong enough. Okay, my iron is at about 370. Shouldn't need to do any more. There's going to be a bit of a. I wonder if I could smear this off of here. 
Yeah, I'll just leave well enough alone. Now, now that's going to be extremely strong, far stronger than if I was to have used uh, uh, CA glue. Now, it could be that I'm living a little bit dangerously here, but uh, I'm noticing that there's some little little bumpies here on this. This one, could I possibly very, very lightly just file it? different angle here. my sanding stick. Now the sanding stick isn't really isn't really designed for uh, for solder, is it? This is the uh, this is the medium. Now you can see it's scratching everything. Oh, it's actually doing a better job. Yeah, doing a better job. Yeah, it's going to take it down and, and it's going to leave the solder in the joint where where it counts. Now where's the fine? I don't know if the fine is going to make any difference or not. It's pretty, pretty worn out. Now I don't want to get too exuberant here and, and end up breaking this. I've, I've smoothed it out a little bit there. Probably you can see it better than I can. Have you heard that before? Okay, I am sure that you knew this was going to happen. Now you can see that even though I did a lot of sanding and filing, the uh, the joint still has the solder in it. Okay, I pushed record again here because I just sort of got to get perspective here. Oh, had to go poke at it, didn't you? Now, we are at the place where we have to make up our antenna on top of the, I was going to say flagpole, mast. I think that possibly, now that I'm now that I'm looking at it, we might do better putting this on last after uh, we have gotten the. Where is it here? This little U-shaped railing thing here that you can probably hardly see. We will zoom in when we when we round it over. Um, yeah, I think we'd better do this first. But I'm going to have to leave that until uh, the next episode. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm going to say, right? Thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, 
We'll be seeing you tomorrow.